Okay. And, um, and so I moved up to Reading a little over a year ago and started this position with the BLM. So I will do my best to answer questions, although I can definitely say I won't have all the answers uh, for sort of the nitty gritty BLM uh, related questions in terms of a, a federal uh, public lands agency, but I will do my best. Let's see if I can get my screen going, all righty. Okay, is everybody seeing the, the PowerPoint slide here? It's yes. great, it's very clear. Okay. And before you begin, I would appreciate it if everybody mute themselves. Yeah, just to avoid any sort of weird feedback and delays. So as Catherine mentioned, um, I am a park ranger, which is kind of a misleading title since we're not the park service, um, but essentially I'm a part of our recreation department. Uh, and I spend a lot of time in the field working on our trails, which we have many, um, but also focus a lot on community partnerships, which can mean a lot of different things and look a lot of different ways, but I'll be talking about that later in the presentation. Um, I think we've talked enough about my previous lives. Um, just as a general overview, the mission of the Bureau of Land Management is to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of public lands uh, for the use and enjoyment of present and future generations. Our field office here in Reading manages about 250,000 acres of public land, which is spread across five counties here in Northern California, uh, from Southern area in Butte County uh, up to the Northern parts of Siskiyou County. This is not a very clear graphic, but it kind of gives you a sense of the surrounding Reading area. Um, you should be able to see my blue, fairly large mouse pointer here that I'm hoping will, will guide us through some of these slides throughout the presentation. But you can see Reading's down here. All the white areas are private lands. The green areas are forest service. The purple here is Whiskey Town Park Service and then all these yellow boxes is BLM. And we'll dive closer into that, but that just kind of gives you a sort of a sense of the public lands here around the Reading area. And to kind of talk about that, I know um, seeing that graphic, it looks kind of strange. You see all these, these checkerboarded squares of BLM lands, and there's a little bit of an explanation to that, which I'll I'll briefly go through. I know this graphic is really small and has a lot of information on it, but if people are interested in seeing about the evolution of the BLM, um, that link, that address at the top there um, has a really nice two-part graphic that, that goes through kind of the whole history of the evolution and formation of the BLM. Um, so the BLM was established in 1946, but its roots actually go back uh, even further to the years after America's independence when we were beginning to acquire additional lands. Uh, so if you think way back to high school history class, you may, you may remember hearing about things like the Homestead Act or the Railroad Act and different mining laws, which all encouraged homesteading and westward migration as the federal government uh, gave land out to settlers. Um, it's always important to remember that these lands were often stolen uh, from Native Americans who first called these lands their home but as history moved forward um, and changes took place and the westward migration took place, um, there were a lot of changes and we took over um, the majority of the land. And over time, different values and attitudes regarding public land shifted, um, which created other acts, which created tracts of land that we all know very well, such as the Park Service and Forest Service, which had very clear um, you know, chunks of land boundaries. Uh, as the BLM was formed through the merging of the General Land Office and the U.S. Grazing Service, um, 
you know, the kind of leftover parcels are essentially what came under the BLM jurisdiction. And so all these lands that weren't already established for um, other public uses and weren't already private lands ended up under BLM lands. And that kind of resulted in the formation of this sort of crazy checkerboarded look that you often see with BLM lands. And so just a little bit about our lands here in Northern California. I uh, just wanted to mention that we do have a guiding document for each field office. Um, so Reading uh, Field Office has a guiding docu document, which is the resource management plan. Um, you know, it's kind of like a sort of like a like a county or a city general plan. Uh, it essentially sets the boundaries of what we can and can't do. Um, you know, it's our guiding document. Uh, and it often establishes the desired future conditions and management actions and can designate special areas to different parcels of land. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those in the presentation, but for example, um, one is called a area of critical environmental concern. Uh, the Sacramento River Bend area is an area such as that. And that essentially uh, recognizes really important uh, values that could be cultural, riparian, archaeological. Um, there's a lot of different things that could make it classified that way. Um, and so if someone wanted to develop on that land, for example, like a power line to go through the land, there would have to be a lot of extra steps taken to, to limit impacts on those values that were identified. So there's a lot of different classifications of BLM lands that can be formed under this resource management plan. Um, the current one is actually from 1993, and so it's fairly old, and the main focus of that RMP was to uh, block up public lands uh, for better public access, management ease, and conservation. And so over the last, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, BLM, the, the Reading Field Office, has really made an effort to start to consolidate those lands into more specific chunks and to kind of break up that checkerboarding. Um, we are currently undergoing a resource management plan revision, uh, which is a public, um, public process, so you can and should be involved. There's a link here um, that you could follow to uh, see the document, the process, uh, and get involved. Public comment will be coming uh, up in January and February for 60 days. Uh, I believe we'll be getting the win to Audubon Society's email onto that, uh, our listserv, so it's sent out to them. But if others are interested in uh, making sure that they're involved, check out that website or get in touch with me directly and I can make sure your email is on uh, our list. So let's take a closer look at your local BLM lands. I'm going to be kind of jumping back and forth between the PowerPoint and Google Earth. Um, Google Earth is just the best tool I have right now to easily show it, but we can see kind of the same snapshot I showed you earlier, uh, only highlighting the BLM lands, which are the yellow squares. Um, and you'll see some other points on here, which are areas that we're gonna look at, different specific points. So some of the principal BLM recreation areas that we have um, are Clear Creek Greenway, which is just southwest of the town here in this area, which also has the Cloverdale Trails, which are up here in the corner next to Horsetown Preserve, which many of you may know about. We have Rock Creek Area Trails, which are up here closer off of 299 and Old Shasta. We have the Sacramento River Rail Trail, which I'm sure everyone is very familiar with. The, the river trail is actually the city's trail up until you get to Keswick Dam. Um, right, until you get to Keswick Dam. And then from there north, it is under um, BLM's jurisdiction. It's actually technically the Bureau of Reclamation land, but we have a collaboration uh, partnership where we manage the trails in that area. We also have the Chappie Shasta OHV area, which is not a particular interest to the birding community, it seems. Um, you know, there's a lot of 
this is this whole area out here, basically from Shasta Dam, uh, west and north over towards French Gulch. Um, but a lot of that's OHV access, so a lot of dirt bikes, motorbikes, side bys, um, jeeping, and those things. Another main recreation area we have as we move kind of out of the central Shasta County is down in the Sacramento River Bend recreation area. So that's all these chunks over here. Um, there's a couple different access areas and we'll, we'll dive into a closer look at some of those areas. Then over in Trinity County, we have, we actually manage the Northern section about 40 miles of the Trinity River um, so we have a lot of river access areas. We have a couple campgrounds. Um, there's a trail system in the Weaverville Community Forest. And um, it's all kind of along the, the Trinity River corridor through here. And then we do have another recreation area, which isn't very developed at the moment, but it's all the way down in Forks of Butte, southeast of us, down in this area. So those are kind of our main, sort of main recreation areas. And as you can see, there's a lot of other BLM uh, lands spread out in different parcels, but those are sort of the, the main recreation areas. Oh, I don't believe I mentioned the Keswick area trails, which are on the Eastern side of the Sacramento River. So you've got the, Sa the Sacramento River rail trail that runs parallel with the river and then on the eastern side of the river from Shasta Dam down, you have all these parcels of land. There's a, a couple trails, you know, Chamise Peak in here, and trails that run the whole way down and connect all the way back down to um, the Keswick Dam and down to the River Rail Trail. So as regards to birding, um, I've pinpointed a couple areas that seem like the best uh, birding habitats and accessible areas, uh, some of which have already been mentioned, the Sacramento River, uh, River Bend recreation area. And there's a couple areas in there we'll look at. That includes Hog Lake, which is down in that area, Oak Slough and Jelly's Ferry, Rancho Briscow, Redding Island, or Reading Island, I should say, Dry Lake, Loudon Ranch, Ewing Reservoir, Bucktail, Clear Creek and Rail Trail. So these are kind of spread out. Those, those first handful are all down in the Sac Bend area. And then these others are in some other areas. And we're gonna, we're gonna look at each of those. So specifically Shasta County, let's just kind of go through these one by one. We'll go back to Clear Creek, which is just Southwest of downtown. We call this the Clear Creek Greenway. There's a handful of um, trail access areas. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on, I have a trails layer. And this is, um, it's not completely up to date, but it'll give us a, a general idea of the trails that are in each of these areas. So Clear Creek um, has a good variety of riparian species. Um, I spoke with our, um, our biologist who is also an avid birder and he was, he. You know, shared with me over the years different uh, areas that he's found good birding and some of the species he's found. He said down here he's seen yellow breasted chats, uh, phenopepla, um, uh, let's see, belted kingfishers, spotted sandpipers, wood ducks. You can see that the trail isn't always along the river itself, but there's a trail access here called China Gardens that you can hike down to the riverside following just a short road here. Um, you've got Gold Dredge, which takes you down to a couple different access areas along the river, along Clear Creek, and so on. You can hike these trails the length of the creek or just park at these different trailheads and uh, access the creek. This is the Clear Creek Gorge. Overlook, which is a really beautiful area. And then as you move up this trail and cross the road past the Horsetown Preserve, you get into the Cloverdale trail system. Um, there's not so much riverfront access here. There's some really nice overlooks of Clear Creek, but you're not very close to the water. 
Uh, so it's kind of a standard oak woodland where you'll find woodpeckers, flickers, oat titmouse, white-breasted nuthatch, um, and those types of species that you would find in an oak woodland. So those two are kind of grouped together in the same area there. We can go up to the river rail trail. And I want to look at that because people may not realize all the different parts of it that can be accessed um, easily without you know walking or biking the whole thing. Um, there is, well, we'll start down here right off of Keswick Dam. This is Keswick Dam, yep. So the trail isn't actually on this map, but right at the dam on this corner here, there's a trail called the Fisherman's Trail, which meanders out here along the lake before coming back up and meeting up with the rail trail, which you can also access right here at this, this parking area. And as you move up the rail trail, there's this trailhead here called Rock Creek um, Rail Trail Access, which gets you onto it there. There's the Keswick Boat Launch Access Area. If you wanna get further up, a little further away from people, um, there is this Copley Mountain, it's called the Copley Mountain OHV staging area, but there's a dirt road that comes down this way and you can actually access all of that OHV area if you continue north, but there is a parking area right here that you can get on and access the trail. And then if you wanted to access it from further north, you'd have to go across Shasta Dam and enter that OHV area where there's a campground, um, and the parking lot here. So you can access the trail way up here if you'd like. Uh, so the rail trail is good, you know, because it's along the Sacramento River. Um, so species, they kind of like that moving water habitat, um, different diving ducks like mergansers, common golden eye, um, herons and things you'll find along the rail trail. Mule Mountain Road. So this is over on the back side of the Swayze Recreation Area, which you may or may not be familiar with, but just west of Redding here, this whole trail system here, this kind of northeast part of it is called the Swayze Recreation Area. And on this back side is this whole Mule Mountain area. And so you can access these trails on Mule Mountain Road just off of Placer um, right here on the road. And there's a trailhead. There's two or three trailheads along here where these trails meet the road. Um, you'll see a lot of mountain biking bikers out here, some horseback riders and hikers. Again, it's kind of that standard oak woodland um, habitat, but there's a lot of, uh, well, there's three different trail access points. And if you continue further up this road, you actually enter into the Whiskey Town um, recreation area. Um, so our, our biologist actually said that one fall when he was out at the Christmas, well, actually, I guess it wouldn't have been the fall. One time when he was out at the Christmas bird count, um, said he saw thousands of robins in this area um, because there were a lot of toyon um, and toyon berries. So um, can be kind of hit or miss, I suppose, but he said that was a really unique experience for him. So Rock Creek, Salt Creek, I just wanted to mention this real quickly because it is close to town, easily accessible, and there is a new trail that was just built this year off of 299. So we're missing part of the trail system here, but um, nope, nope, I'm out of in the wrong area. So Salt Creek, so as you're coming west out of Reading on 299, there's a, the Salt Creek Trail crosses the, the highway here. Um, there's a trailhead up here called Upper Salt Creek, which is off of Lower Springs Road. Um, you know, and this goes along the creek. So you'd have some, some riparian habitat there. And now it crosses the road and you can actually come down all, all the way down to the rail trail on this new trail that was built this year, um, which is along the creek the whole way. So there could be some good opportunities in there. Fisherman's Trail we already talked about. 
Um, East Keswick trails, again, this is not necessarily, I'm not necessarily recommending it for any special birding opportunities, but just want to recognize that there is a lot of trail system over here. This is just east of, um, of the Sacramento River. It can be accessed from several different trailheads, including the Keswick Dam. Um, there's the Hornbeck Trailhead, the Walker Mine Trailhead, and the Flanagan Trailheads, which are all in these areas up in here. And you get some really good views of the river um, and get down to the river in a couple areas. Otherwise, you're kind of in that um, oak woodland and you actually get a little bit more um, forest cover as you get further up towards the, the Shasta Dam. So also in Shasta County, we have a little parcel far east called Dry Lake. And so this is going all the way out towards Bernie where you would get on, let's see, forget the name of the road here. Uh, I may have to look that up, but there is a, huh, lost it in my notes here, it looks like, but um, there's Dry Lake, which is down here. So you'd follow this road, I believe, just, just west of, uh, Bernie, you'd come down and get to this parcel. Once I find my notes, I'll let you, I'll, I'll come back and mention what our, our biologist said he, he would go out here for. So Tehama County birding, going south of Redding into the Sac Bend area will Start, let's get back to Reading. So moving down into Hama County. So we'll start down at Hog Lake, which is down here off of Route 36 in the Sac Bend area, but accessible on 36 over here. So this is well known area for spring migration. Um, I was told that you could find hundreds of tundra swans out here in February. Uh, I believe Wintu Audubon Society or Wintu has done uh, birding trips out here in the past. Um, this is a pretty short hike, level hike. Uh, there's kind of a little loop here, but you can kind of just meander wherever looks good to get close to the water and view in this area. Um, so later in the winter, as it dries up, there'll be different shorebirds, sandpipers. Um, during the winter, when it has water, there'll be a lot of ducks out there. Um, but in the summer, there's not a whole lot of activity. And just to give you a sense, I kind of, oops, not that. I drew some of these lines, these green lines that you'll be seeing in the presentation, just to get a sense of uh, distances Find it here. So that little loop that I drew there is a mile to go down the road, out and around and back. So a little over a mile. Um, you know, to walk this whole, this whole loop here. All right, let's move up to Spring Branch Road, which is accessible as you're coming. If you come to this area from Redding, coming down Jelly's Ferry Road, you get this hard fork in the road. And we have this BLM kiosk right here, and it turns into a pretty rough um, road, dirt road that comes up onto the mesa up here. You probably need high clearance. You shouldn't need four wheel drive, but a small sedan will probably not get up this, this steep part here. But as you get out into this area, you're gonna find some vernal pools that offer some good um, 
some good birding opportunities. You do want to be aware that there is, uh, this is a popular shooting area. So up here where this green dot is, I believe I didn't put this on here, but in around this area, um, people will be pulled over, parked and shooting south, um, target shooting. But if you drive just past that, and start to dry up in April. So that's also good for migrant shorebirds. Um, in the winter when it's full, it has a variety of ducks um, and it's kind of a similar experience to Hog Lake. Okay, let's move on to Oak Slough and Jelly's Ferry. Can you hear me, David? I can. So I was wondering if I drove past there the other day when uh, Tim and I uh, went down to Oak Slough. Is that is there a locked gate across that, or is just a? I saw a gate across that road up to Spring Branch Road. Is it open? There, there is not a gate here. Um, there may be like a cattle guard right here, but there there's no gate that we that I've ever seen. There's no BLM gate. Okay. So it should be open. Thank you. Gate looking infrastructure, but no gates that are open and closed. And if there are, I'm, I don't have a good eye on the comments, the chat comments. So uh, maybe Larry or someone else from Wintu could help, you know, feel free to let me know if there's questions along the way. Yeah, I can do that now that I have my audio working. Sounds good. All right, so I was moving over to Oak Slough. Just south of here, continuing on Jelly's Ferry Road, you'll hit a, a parking area called Oak Slough right here, and I'm sort of combining it with Jelly's Ferry, which is, there's also a river access and parking area here, which kind of looks like a mess right now because of all the bridge construction. Um, but these are two areas where you can access trails um, to get um, from Oak Slough to get up to this pond here, which is called um, Osprey Pond, which has an Osprey platform on it, but uh, doesn't seem to have a nest right now from what I've been told. Um, you know, walking in along this lower green route, you're kind of walking um, in sort of a big kind of valley oak habitat um, where you'll find white-breasted nuthatches, titmice, acorn, woodpeckers, um, and species like that. And then you get up to the, the pond and then, you know, you have this riparian habitat uh, along the Sacramento River. This is called the, the Yana Trail, this trail that follows the river and continues all the way around. So I'll have to inter interrupt you there because uh, Tim and I went there yesterday. We saw three bald eagles, uh, prairie falcon, several Lewis's woodpeckers. Um, right. Yeah, it was a, a really good birding cool, area. Cool visit. Yeah, there was, um, I guess about a mile east of this Jelly Ferry parking area, um, there is a, a bald eagle nest along the Yana Trail, about a, a mile east up the trail. So it makes sense, you saw some bald eagles. And, and I'm gonna chime in too, this is Dan. Um, so along that, uh, that loop you've got the in green there, uh, where you yes. said, you know, you get from the particular, well, on both sides, particularly the lower side, I think, I've seen Lewis's woodpeckers there almost in very nice. Way. If you follow where the red trail picks up again and gets fairly close to the, yeah, keep going, keep going east. Keep going, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going right around in there. Um, you, you're on a, a slope 
uh, you're on, you're contouring along up. Well, you, you got, it does go uphill, but there's a, it's a rocky slope that you're on the edge of, and it's a great place for finding, uh, 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 red Rufus crown sparrows. Wow. We didn't see any of those, but that'd be great. You have to, you have to look in that rocky slope that, that you get going in that area. Oh, did we lose? I think we, yeah, I was going to say that we lost um, David. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, I guess we'll wait for David to show back up. Yeah, I was wondering yeah. why all of a sudden we lost. Uh, I'm going to pause yeah. record. Well, I'm a kind of afraid to pause recording. So I won't yeah. pause recording, but I'll just uh, when I when I record this to YouTube, I will cut this section out. Let, um, Larry, is that Mule Mountain Road a paved road or a dirt road off of Placer? I don't know where that is because I um, I kind of was missing that part of the presentation. Mm. Okay. When, I, when I was trying to get my uh, my my video, my audio working. Catherine. Yes. It is, it is paved for several miles. But ah, you, can't, okay. you, can't, you can't really go without four wheel drive. You really can't go all the way through Whiskey Town, though. But it's paved for several miles and it's sort of interesting back in there. So it's, it, it, it seems like it. I, we, yeah. We were in an area near Whiskey Town, and I wondered about driving that way. Yeah, so it'd be sometimes. easier to do it from the Mule Mountain side. Don't try it from Whiskey Town. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay. <For sure. laughs> hmm. Hey, while, while we're waiting for David, uh, just another another thing that I noticed. Uh, he was talking about the Keswick. Uh, uh, trail there, or I forget what he called it, but the one up the west side of the Sacramento River, uh, just below Shasta Dam, between Keswick and, and Shasta Dams. And another good thing, really, uh, it's a it's a really good place for uh, for uh, wren tits, wren tits, and also hermit thrushes in the winter. Uh, they're all over the place along along there. Hey, I'm back. Hey. Great. <laughs> Glad to see you're back. Yeah, we were sorry waiting about that, I guess. for you. Appreciate it. Yeah, last I heard was there was a, a you know, you're on a slope there hiking east on the on the Yana Trail and then it then it froze on me. Yeah. So sorry about that. Saw, it's, it's, uh, okay. Rufus Rufus Crown Sparrows. Yeah, on that That's rocky slope. We, uh, the place where you're talking about is where we saw the bald eagles. And then, uh, like I said, we also had a prairie falcon. We had uh, Fina peplas. Um, yeah. Nice. So was, and a northern harrier. I was just looking at my list. Um, nice. So, yeah, feel free to uh, share your screen again and Yep. I thought you had really good, really good access there at your office. Yeah. Or it must be maybe so, it's maybe it's our I'm access. Do uh, computer updates in the evenings. It's probably something weird like that. Let's see here. There you go. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to see the distance there. That that kind of loop you know, around the, the bottom area up to the pond and back to the parking lot is about a little under two miles, looks like, um, to do that loop that you see in green. You know, as we were saying about a mile east, if you just go on this, this uh, Jellies Ferry, you get out to this area where the, the trails meet. So there's a couple of different ways you could do different loops or in, in and out hikes here. Go 
get my PowerPoint back up. To sack bend. Can you hear me okay? Or am I freezing up again? We can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing it kind of being funky with the Zoom controls, but just we'll go ahead and move on down to the actual kind of this sack bend main main central area. So you access this by coming down Jellies Ferry Road and then getting on, let's see, what is this? Bend, might be Bend Road, um, which takes you past the elementary school and winds up here into a couple trailhead accesses that we have um, along the road here where you see these network of trails. Um, so there's a variety of wetland and such in here, which vary throughout the season because uh, some of them are dependent on rainfall. There is an irrigation ditch um, canal that runs through here, but BLM only has access to a certain amount of that water. And so we have to sort of spread it out between different wetland areas. Um, but kind of this area where you see the green line um, will remain pretty wetland-like for the majority of the year. Um, and out to these, these ponds you see here. Um, so you might see white fronted during the spring, um, Virginia rails, several species of crane, um, American bittern. We do get some hunters in here during hunter, hunting season. So from December until mid-February, there's kind of a lot of activity, uh, hunting activity. So it's tougher for, for birding. Uh, but there's a variety of trails that are all flat in this area and a variety of trailheads. So you could link things together. Um, you've got this bass pond uh, parking area right here where you could hike up to this area where we have views of the Sacramento River. You could do this loop in this area or some mountain backs and you're in this kind of marshy wetland area. There's this trailhead here called Payne's Creek, which takes you down to that uh, Payne's Creek, the irrigation canal. Um, so you can come down directly to it here or if you go east from here, there's a, an old road that you can hike along the, the creek in this more riparian habitat through here. Uh, there's a pond here, Coyote Pond, which is losing water um, and probably not great for birding. But as you get out here to the end of the road, you have Perry Riffle Trailhead. And so this is where you could easily access the other side of that Yana Trail. Um, so that actually loops the whole way around. Um, there's a series of trails, but essentially it's a Yana Trail that follows the, the Sacramento River the whole way out. There's actually a a camping, primitive camping area out here called Massacre Flats. And you can continue around back over to Jelly's Ferry or Oak Slough. Um, but it's quite a, a distance. I believe it's about eight miles doing this full, full from one end to the other. Am I still with you guys? Yes. Yep. Everybody loves it. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Um, okay, let's move over to Reading Island and Rancho Brisco. Rancho Brisco. So Reading Island is this parcel here. Um, which has a group camp site down here. There's actually a gate right here, but it's a, a road that you could walk in. Um, there's a couple spots where you can get access to the, to the riverfront um, and just kind of have this riparian habitat along the river. Um, 
you might see yellow warblers, yellow breasted chats, um, potentially northern harriers. There's also this loop right over here, which gets close to the river. And then just east of here is this other parcel um, called Rancho Briscoe, which um, this entry, the access to here, this road is not open to the public. There's actually a gate here at the entrance. So you'd have to park and walk in. We've had people get stuck in here before because the private landowner has that gate open uh, and they've come in and then it's locked on their way out. Uh, but let's see, I drew this line so that we could get a, an idea of how far that is. We lost him again. Oops. Hey, what I've been wondering, I've got, I've got to ask him, I guess, but does anybody know, does BLM have a, uh, any sort of a, even a running uh, a bird list for these various units that they oversee? Uh, I don't know, but I know that uh, he was asking his birder friend that works there um, what birds we might see in the locations that he was giving us. Uh, so I don't think they have bird lists for, I don't know if they have bird lists for any of those locations, but that'd be a good thing to ask him when he comes back on. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think some of us could make pretty guesses about what would he wear too um but, but it's still a, a nice thing to have um that uh you know hey we could we could post such a thing or a link to such a thing uh from our website right i don't uh know uh we have to ask him some of the, a lot of those water those ponds and stuff are, I think several of them are filled with rainfall. So when we went by that osprey pond, uh, it, it wasn't very full. There were only, um, there were four ducks in it. Uh, there was, an, there were lots of osprey platforms around that area on Oak Slough, but um, obviously the osprey aren't here yet. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get some precipitation uh, sometime this month and next month to fill those ponds up. Yeah, ne next week is what I heard. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a couple days where it says it's supposed to snow in Oak Run. Ah, ah. Now you're still getting Lewis's woodpecker on your drive home too, right, to Oak Run? <laughs> Say that again? You're still getting Lewis's woodpeckers on, on your ride from Reading to, to Oak Run, right? Yeah, they are, they're all over the place. There's yeah. usually at least, at least 20 of them wow. flying around at, at the end of Oak Run Road, just before you go up Carpenter's Grade to Oak Run. Yeah, yeah that's pretty the crazy. City, yeah, that's where the city has gone. The, from All the way from Palisadro to Oak Run, they've cut all the trees away from the, the road. Uh, which a, a lot of them were those huge river oaks. Um, and mostly they just trimmed them back. But uh, he, uh, he just sent me a text saying he's uh, restarting his computer to see if that helps. Um, wow. So, yeah, I think the, the tree trimming on Oak Run Road has kind of freaked out the Lewis's woodpecker. Probably, probably, it's probably reduced several several of their breeding uh cavities i would think yeah yeah gotta get some nesting boxes out there i guess larry <laughs> yeah you could do that <laughs> they're they're uh they're pretty big birds those lewis's woodpeckers i know i know and uh you know who else competes for their 
their homes. I mean, they I would assume they would outcompete just because they are bigger, outcompete a bluebird or, you know, a, a swallow. Um, oh, yeah, but, uh, I think Starlings might. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how they would do with Starlings. I'm sure they would outcompete any of the other. Uh, I mean, the, the, when I was out there look, watching them the other day, um, you know, they compete with acorn woodpeckers for nesting cavities mm -hmm. out there. And it looked can, like. Can you tell who dominates? What's that? Can you tell who dominates or is it close? Well, I was going to say, it looks like the Lewis's woodpecker dominates. Okay. Right. Hmm. While we're waiting for uh, David, has anybody else had any uh, good sightings? How about a short-eared owl? Really? Yeah, I went out, uh, Jody and I went out looking for one today and uh, you know, once it got a little later in the afternoon, sure it was. Fly, you know, they 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 use the same habitat as northern harriers, so they're just flying over the fields, that just like harriers. Um, and uh, yeah, it was kind of fun because we went out to see that, and there it was, um, just out on a coastal spit out out this way. Um, so yeah, it was fun. I think uh, that mm. would be a life bird for me. I don't think I've ever seen a short-eared owl. Yeah, yeah. I'll take you I'll out there. So they're, they're, they're just showing up now this time of year, and they'll be here, you know, I'll say till I guess April, something like that. So they migrate uh, from somewhere and they breed here? Uh, winter here. Oh, okay, then they, yeah, I see, then they, head back i guess south or yeah uh i oh i would think north and you know north open country like I said, they they're in the same kind of habitat as as harriers but i haven't checked their range maps to see just where they what their breeding turf is But they're kind of neat because, you know, you see those owls and they fly along and they look like they've had their <laughs> had their faces cut off, you know, just real flat up front as they're flying. Right. Yeah. Kind of typical owl. Uh, yeah. 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 We had, uh, well, yeah, one of the other things we saw from Oak Slough, we had a skein of about 200 greater white-fronted geese flying over. That's always nice. That seems late, doesn't it? Or yeah, early. I, I guess. I guess. I think it's early. It's early. They're it's early. just. Yeah, they're early. They're just coming in. Yeah. Okay. I guess we'll find out. Uh, when we had in January, was it January 8th? When we head to Sacramento Wildlife Refuge? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but I see David is back, so I'm gonna ask my question. Sure. David, I, I, I know you're gonna continue on. A, a, yeah, I, I hope you're hearing. Um, uh, I, I'm wondering, do you, does BLM have um, any sort of even a, a running bird list for any of these areas? I don't believe so. Not that I'm aware of. I know that the, well, that's not true. The, the Horsetown Preserve in Clear Creek, uh, I know they have a bird list and I believe the Sac Bend area has a bird list. Don't quote me on that one, but I think it does. Um, I don't think either of those are available on the website, but uh, if I'm able to get a hold of digital copies of them, it's something I could make available. That'd be yeah, great. It'd, be, it'd be neat if, if they were made available on a website. And I, I was saying while you were gone, then uh, 
then we could, Win to Audubon could link to them. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look into that. I, th I think that's a good idea. I'm sure I could get a copy of the Horse Town. I'll have to to confirm the one down in Sack Bend and see um, see about getting that up there. I think that'd be a great resource for people. All right. Third times a charm. Third times a charm. Yeah, I don't know. Little little computer here just doesn't want to give its best tonight. But let's give it another shot. <clears throat> let's see if I can get, so you seeing Google Earth right now? Yeah. Okay. And now you are seeing Trinity County birding. Yes. Uh, great. All right, so Trinity County As I mentioned, we've got this whole corridor along the Trinity River. So different opportunities for that riparian habitat again. Um, fun fact, my, our biologist told me that uh, there is a pair of, or there's a bald eagle nest every mile and a half along the Trinity River. So, Lots of opportunities to see bald eagles out there. So the main areas I wanted to point out that were recommended to me. Uh, first is Loudon Field. So this is accessible by, if you come up 299, um, Old Lewiston Road cut off will get you down here just past the Trinity Fly Shop or if you go into Lewiston and then head west on Old Lewiston Road it'll get you over to this area where there's a parking area um, called Loudon Field it's actually not on BLM land but it's we manage the parking area and there are these open kind of meadows uh, there's actually some old orchard uh, trees in here um, and some old historical buildings, but if you park in the parking area, there's no real trails in this meadow. Uh, basically what you do, well, you can't, you're feel free to go wandering through this area if you'd like to. Um, there's kind of, you know, as you can see, sort of makeshift deer paths and um, trails that animals follow, but you can go west out of the parking area and it'll connect you right over to this road here, which is gated. Um, but you can follow this, this dirt road here. There's a pond right here. Um, and if you continue up this way, you get access to the Trinity River. There's actually some areas where they did a lot of restoration work in here where they put a big bend back in the river. Um, so there's kind of old access points where you can get onto the river's edge and you have this kind of interface of the open meadow uh, and the riparian habitat along the river. Uh, let's see, I was told yellow-breasted chats, he's my biolo our, our biologist has seen in here. In general, he described it as pretty birdie. <laughs> um, possibility of seeing bald eagles, ospreys, And then if you look up here on the other side of the river, we have a river access area called Bucktail. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it's not on the other side of the river. It's on the same side of the river, just up the road here. You um, continue on Old Lewiston Road. You'll see a BLM sign here on the main road and you would turn in heading north here um, and get into this BLM parcel. And our river access is actually up here in the corner but there's also parking um, around this bridge here where the old, I guess the bucktail fishing hole is actually down here. And then from our parking area up here, there's another little spot right here. Uh, and you can hike east over to this big pond, which is part of a restoration project too for spawning habitat for salmon. Um, so this holds water all the time and you can hike around this trail uh, around this area 
Um, good area for seeing wood ducks, common mergansers, uh, shovelers, mallards, herons. Um, I was told green herons would probably be, this would be a prime habitat for green heron, but we haven't seen them there. And if you look at a map on our website, we'll talk about maps a little bit later. I know we're going to end up running short on time, but um, we have a good map for the whole Trinity area. Uh, so you can see different places you can access the river from and go out exploring if you want to be up in this area. The other spot to mention is um, Ewing Reservoir, which I actually don't believe it's on our map right here, but it's over by Hay Fork. Um, there's a reservoir that has a nice trail around it. It's kind of a standard um, oak woodland um, around the edges of the reservoir. And uh, I was told ruddy ducks, buffle heads. It's just a really nice walk in general. Um, again, not on this map, but it's over by Hay Fork. So another spot over in Trinity County to, to check out. So further up north into Siskiyou County, um, we don't really have any developed recreation areas, but we do have BLM lands, some more accessible than others, most of them not very accessible. Uh, but just wanted to point them out because I was told that they're fairly unique and nice. We have a couple of these ACECs, which I mentioned in the beginning. So they're areas of critical environmental concern um, I believe for their, their riparian habitats. And so this area is along the Shasta River and the Klamath River. Again, no trails, but there are roads that go through here. So there's opportunities to kind of get out and explore if you wanted to. And then further up, the one that was most recommended to me is this area called Horseshoe Ranch Wildlife Area. So you see this kind of checkered area here is actually uh, mixed in with uh, fish and wildlife um, lands. So these chunks that are not yellow are fish and wildlife and they have a, you can see a parking lot uh, right in here. Um, and I believe, I believe from here you'd have to hike in. I'm not hundred percent sure, but if you, if you look up Horseshoe Ranch Wildlife Area, you'll find information on how to access the trails that go up into this area and are checkerboarded with BLM land. So let me just re kind of recenter my map here. Covered a lot of ground. So I wanted to briefly mention, you know, finding maps and finding ways to access the BLM land because we've looked at a lot of it. And um, I know it can be difficult to then go out and try to find these areas. So the first thing I recommend is just checking out our website. Let's see if it'll pull it up for me. I had all these pages already pulled up before I restarted the computer, but on our website, you'll find um, maps to some of these recreation areas. Um, I was going to show you, but it may want to be a little, a little funky. So um, we have, you know, regular maps. There are PDF files that you could download and print and um, use. We also have some maps that are what we call geo-referenced, and that means that they can be used with apps that will uh, track your GPS point. Um, so you can find those by going to this website. Um, you would go here and then you would click on California and you would scroll down to the Reading field office and the maps that we do have available would be listed there. Those can be used with an app. I'll tell you about in just a moment. And then we've got the best way to really explore all the lands kind of the way we're doing in Google Earth is here, let me get out of presentation mode real quick so that I can pull it up. 
So is it hard to find those um, links going just going directly to the BLM site? Because I noticed that there, there's only one that's that's actually says maps, and the other ones are kind of obscure links. Let's see if I can show show you real quick. Is everyone seeing my browser now? Yeah. Okay. So on our general website, you know, if you look up Reading Field Office, on the right side here, you'll see the different recreation areas, some of which I mentioned. So you would go to one, for example, Sacramento River Bend, outstanding recreation area. First of all, on all these pages, you will see an interactive map at the top, which is a a map that shows um, all of the lands and recreation areas throughout the country, uh, but it's kind of funky to navigate in this little window. So I'm gonna show you how to access it from the actual website. But if you scroll down on any of these recreation areas, on the left side here, you'll see a link that says external map. And that's where you would find the PDF files for each of these recreation areas. And so you click on that or you would right click it and download it or you know click it open it and then you could look at it download it later um, and these you know are built by us to show the, the specific recreation opportunities in these areas so this is the whole Sacramento River Bend area that we were looking at and showing some of these er other areas like the Battle Creek boat access area I know um, down here, old, old Battle Creek fishing access, I believe, right? There's a, is that where the bridge is that some folks like to go birding? Or is that further up I hear Battle Creek? I think up here at Battle Creek. Um, but anyway, this is, that's how you would find maps for these specific recreation areas, is looking at this sidebar. Now that- okay, that That's easy enough. Yeah. Now that interactive map that I just mentioned that you see at the top of each page, you would follow this link, which is in the, the PowerPoint slide, but it could also be sent out to people easily. Um, you would follow this link and then the BLM national data link is what you would follow. And this is up to date, the most up to date, accurate map you'll find. Um, so as we make changes to our whole geo database, um, you know, it gets pushed out to this national system, um, which you see on this, this page. And so once you're here, you have all these options of different layers you can turn on and off. So you have to kind of play with it um, to see what you want to see, but you could choose, uh, let's, recreation sites. And all these icons pop up. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, the lands layer is already on there. So you start scrolling in. You get this nice view of all the different lands, like we saw in that original uh, screenshot when I started the presentation. You've got Whiskey Town, BLM, Forest Service, private lands. So if we go down and look at the Sac Bend area again it shows you these different points of interest, some parking areas, trailheads, um, you know, the main roads, and you can click on different features to see what it is. So this is Oak Slough day use area. So this could be a good resource for kind of scouting the areas you wanna go check out as well. And you can also, um, I assume, change that to topographical or street view or whatever. You know, I haven't played around with this system a whole lot myself, so I'm not 100% sure that you can with this. Um, I'm pretty, I, 
I'm not sure either, but I, I'm, I think you probably can. I know Audubon has um, an uh, Argus system like that also. Yeah. Yeah, you have to get in here and really play around to see more of the details. Uh, so there's also apps, um, the first of which I want to mention is Avenza, because that's something we use here in the office to um, go out and, and navigate our lands uh, pretty frequently. And the geo-referenced maps I mentioned earlier can be loaded onto Avenza, um, which I think you can have up to five, three or five maps uh, loaded for free without having to, to pay for like the pro service. Um, so those files, those map files that we have available that are geo-referenced could be loaded right into Avenza. And then you would see your point uh, with your GPS on your phone as you're navigating some other apps are all trails, trail forks. You know, these are general trail maps, not specific to BLM. Uh, they often have trails that aren't even um, designated BLM trails, but maybe on BLM land. So they can be problematic at times, but uh, they're also very useful. And I know a lot of people use them and there's a lot of trail systems and a lot of uh, information on them. So those are, are good resources. And then Onyx is, used mostly by hunters. Um, and this is a, a map that will show all sorts of um, land ownership and boundaries for different parcels, as well as trails and roads. I haven't used it a lot myself, but I know some folks in the office here do use it. And a lot of hunters use it when they're going out uh, to navigate different public lands. Um, just a quick time check. I know it's 8.15. Um, about how much time do I have left? However much you want, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, at this point, I'd like to move on into talking about BLM work within the community, but uh, I don't have access to the chat area right now. I don't know if there's any um, questions regarding those specific areas or birding that weren't addressed. I don't know, but at, at this point, anybody that has any questions, I think you can go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask them. All right, if not, we'll continue on. If you think of something, feel free to throw it into the chat area. So as I mentioned, another part of my position as park ranger is to work with community partnerships. Um, and that is something I'm very interested in doing and it's been really challenging uh, due to COVID-19, but um, you know, we're optimistic for more and more opportunities as hopefully things improve. Um, so what it kind of looks like in terms of what's been done in the past and some of the things I've been able to work on in my short time here are different volunteer days, working with AmeriCorps volunteers that we get each year, uh, setting up booths at different festivals in different areas, uh, education programming. So going into the the schools in the area and uh, teaching kids about public lands or leave no trace um, and then participating at different community events throughout the year. And I apologize these presentations don't have <laughs> a lot of pictures of the work we do. Uh, so I threw some in here. Uh, we did get to do a National Public Lands Day cleanup uh, this year in, in 2021. This date you see up here is the, the date for next year. It's in the end of September. But these are some photos from this year's event and that we did and have historically done uh, in collaboration with the Horsetown uh, Preserve there in the Clear Creek Greenway. And this year we also worked with Western 
Shasta Resource Conservation District. Um, some folks from McConnell Foundation were out there as well. So we got a lot of good work done. We were removing tree guards from an old reforestation project along the river corridor, um, working on some trail work as well. We did a lot of graffiti removal, which is a constant um, headache in that area and that we're trying to stay on top of. Painting over graffiti. This is from our AmeriCorps group that we had last season uh, at Happy Valley Elementary School teaching leave no trace principles with some fourth graders. With some different games and activities. They also worked on helping to get our signage up to date, which is an ongoing process, but improving the signs out on the trails and doing trail work in general. And so all of those, um, you know, all of those types of activities are things that we could do with volunteers and different partners in the community, not just with the AmeriCorps or not just with Horsetown. Uh, let me just pop back real quick to right here. Um, some of the festivals that we would normally participate in are um, are the Return of the Salmon Festival, um, which is done at the Coleman Fish Hatchery. There's also the Salmon River Festival in Trinity County in Weaverville. Uh, there's a youth pheasant hunt that is put on in Sacramento, uh, the Sac Rec area. Uh, we typically do a trash cleanup along Trinity River once a year, um, sometimes in line with the Trinity Fair. Uh, we'll do a cleanup on Spring Branch Road uh, pretty much every year with the Shasta County Sportsman's Association. We do a fishing uh, day in Sac Bend as well. Um, and then some of those educational programming in classrooms. So those are kind of a overview of the different things we do in the community. In terms of what we can do, the sky is kind of the limit. Uh, a lot of it depends on what I'm able to um, make happen and what sort of response I get from the public. Uh, in general, I'd like to have more volunteer opportunities ongoing for the public. Right now, the really the main ongoing one we have is trail maintenance work, which is in collaboration with the Reading Trail Alliance, who puts on a, a trail maintenance day on the first Saturday of each month um, throughout the year, most of the year. And that's kind of our main ongoing one. But some of the ideas I have for possible um, partnerships and outreach opportunities are doing guided birding walks for the youth. Uh, I really believe in getting uh, younger folks involved in birding early because I think it's a great tool for teaching about environmentalism um, and a great way to get outdoors and be active. Um, so clearly I'm talking with Win2 Audubon Society about organizing more birding outings on BLM land and, and trying to advertise those to uh, people that we know in the community as well. I'd like for BLM to have more of a presence with different birding, bird count events such as Global Big Day and Christmas Count. Um, you know, volunteerism in general, but also interpretive hikes. Um, I've got a kind of a, a group of people that are really interested in doing interpretive um, volunteerism in Clear Creek, that Clear Creek corridor. So people that are really uh, believe in that that area and want to see it uh, have a better kind of recreational value are interested in doing um, kind of going out as volunteers and being sort of like interpretive rangers like you might imagine at a national park and sort of volunteering their time on a weekend for a couple hours and talking to the public about uh, restoration work there, the importance of the salmon uh, salmon runs and things like that. So I think there's opportunities to do that as well with the birding community. Um, you know, if we get creative. Trail maintenance, um, you know, if there are trails that birding, the birding community is really um, 
sees a need for getting those improved. That's something we could look into working on. And then restoration projects. The area that I mentioned down across from Reading Island, Rancho Brisco, Rancho Brisco. This whole area, there's actually a grant out right now, a grant application out. Oops, I just lost it. Um, where they're putting in to reforest this whole area. Uh, it's, I think it's four or 500 acres. Um, because right now it's just kind of full. There's a lot of uh, invasive species like star thistle um, and they'd like to get valley oak established in here. So that could potentially be a project in the future if the grant is one and, and uh, there may be a lot of needed hands to help with that restoration work. And also back in Clear Creek, the Western Shasta Resource Conservation District is also going to be finishing a planting. Well, they're gonna be doing another planting off of this gold dredge trailhead parking area down in this area where they were unable to finish this area where they weren't able to finish um, in the past when they were doing all this restoration work. So there's gonna be opportunity in the future to get out and do some, some plantings with them as well. Yeah, we used to do uh, uh, bird walks out to Gold Dredge fairly often. Uh, we haven't been there in quite a while. So, you know, that's one of the places that we need to reestablish. Yeah, you know, I went through this whole trail system along here last year and really tried to clean it back up. It was pretty overgrown. Uh, so the trail should be pretty... It, uh, accessible and easy to hike. Some of these little uh, spurs that go down to the, the riverside or the, to Clear Creek had been completely blocked off and overgrown. So I opened those back up and put fresh uh, signage out. So it should be a, a better experience than it was, you know, a year and a half ago. In general, I'm sure everyone's aware, but you do need to be careful with leaving valuables in your car, uh, you know, in general, in all of our BLM lands, but especially this Clear Creek Greenway, um, you know, it'd probably be best to go out in pairs at least and don't leave valuables in your cars in any of these trailheads because uh, we do have some issues with just not the best types of users gathering in, in these parking lots from time to time. So yeah, that's kind of the, you know, the, the presentation there. In general, you know, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, I'm a, a beginner burger myself. So, you know, the, the, a lot of this information I uh, was able to compile by talking with colleagues here at work. Um, and I know I, I didn't offer a ton of information on specific species, specific habitats, uh, but I hope that, you know, just kind of seeing a broad range of the lands that we have and different ways to access them will help people get out and explore uh, because, you know, you all are, are really the experts when it comes to birding and, and finding birds. So I hope this will help get you out there. And then in terms of collaborations and partnerships, you know, as I mentioned, sky is kind of the limit. Um, you know, I have a lot of freedom to develop um, community programming outreach uh, that interests me. Uh, but it also really is guided by whatever the public uh, comes to me and says they'd like to have and see happen in their community. So, you know, birding is something that I see as a really valuable activity um, and something I really enjoy. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of the community and happy to answer questions uh, anytime anybody may have them. And if you have any ideas, you know, for different ways we could work to open more birding opportunities in the community or organize more events. I'm more than happy to talk about that. We've got my email address here. 
as well as my work phone number. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, one thing I'm taking away from this is to check on the birding count um, or the birding list to see if there is one for the Sac Bend area, but try and get that one from Horsetown Preserve <clears throat> on the website. You know, so that's a one positive coming out from, from your comments from this presentation. So yeah, if there's any other questions, feel free to, to ask now. Otherwise, that is, um, that is the presentation for this evening. David, th I want to thank you very much. This is Dan uh, on, on the, from Wintu Audubon. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a map in my head right now, but I do hope there will be opportunities for, for Wintu Audubon and BLM to co collaborate down the road and, and, you know, support each other. And, uh, so don't be a stranger. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can develop. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you, David. That was, that was some good knowledge. I, too, I'm new to the area, so um, it, it was great to see what all new areas I can go visit. Yeah, so we're hoping to, um, we're hoping to set some um trips out to uh several of these locations this coming season um like i said uh, tim and i just went to oak slough yesterday um to check that out and and i and we have a trip already scheduled for oak slough if i'm not mistaken or maybe hog uh, what's that or is it Hog Lake? Or maybe it hasn't been. Oh, is it Hog? Okay, is it Hog Lake? Yeah. Yeah, I got I got confused between those two when I went out the other day and I went to the wrong spot and uh, I was meet I was a little late meeting with uh, Tim. So, but yeah, there's a there's a lot of opportunity out there, and I'm hoping that we get uh, we schedule several bird walks on those BLM lands. Yeah, yeah, please do and and keep me uh, in the loop, you know, for that for that outing. Uh, it looks like that our biologist should be able to go and he's kind of the main birder in the office. Uh, so he has and he has a lot of knowledge just about uh, ecology in general. So he'll be a great resource. And I know he plans on going on that that bird trip. So hopefully we can get more people from the BLM out and and help offer more knowledge, you know, whether it's wildlife or ecology or, or whatever, recreation. Yeah, thank you so much, David. That was a great presentation. Sorry about the, the uh, lapses and in, in the uh, computer issues, but um, it seems to be, at least on my end, starting to get normal with Zoom having interruptions. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I thought everything was fine. <laughs> David, this is Catherine. Thank you very much. And again, thanks for your patience with all the technology challenges. We'll get that together and we'll keep talking about ways to collaborate. I wanted to say earlier that, um, and un unfortunately, Bruce Webb, who was on the call, left, we're engaged in some conversation about some Eastern Shasta County opportunities, including maybe some birding trails. Um, and as we develop that over the next little while, I will keep you in the loop. It might be an interesting way to expand birding information. Sounds good. Yeah, I look forward to that. I, I had I had one other um, observation that's sort of off the wall, which is is Eric Ritter still working in the Reading office? He is. Yep, he's definitely our he's our our longest standing employee, as far as I know. <laughs> well, he 
he has fascinating information um, about the Clear Creek area and about the Chinese encampments there. And it might be, um, it might be interesting to hook some of that on. There's, there's just interesting archeological visuals in that area. Talk to him about it sometime. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, th thank, you me out. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for um, uh, logging on to David's uh, presentation. And if we don't have any more questions for him, then we can let him go since they turned the lights off on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank, thank you, bye -bye. everybody.